Welcome to this overview of PXF Tube Light. So here I have a little uh, scene that I've built in Nuke, uh, some geometry that I've imported using Read Geo. I have uh, spheres and a card and so on. Everything has shaders, so I've made sure that every item is shaded properly. For example, my uh, statue here has a diffuse shader and a specular shader. My chrome ball has a diffuse shader and a reflection shader and so on. Everything is being fed into a scanline render. And if I look at the result of my scanline render, I can see that everything is black. That's because I don't have any lights in my scene. So let's bring in a light. Let's go to the PXF menu under PXF lights and PXF tube light. Let's connect that to our scene. Now everything's pretty bright. We need to move uh, and scale our light. In order to do that, we're gonna create an axis and connect it to our axis input. If I put the viewer on my scene and switch to, to 3D, you can see the viewer gets pretty wacky when there's a lot of lights in the scene. So I can force the viewer to be wireframe by pushing S while my mouse is above the viewer. This brings up the viewer preferences. If I go in the 3D tab, I can go under display, wireframe, and that forces my viewer to be in wireframe. If we look at the tube light, we can see that it's really just a cylinder with a bunch of lights around it. We can hide the light icons to make our lives easier. So let's go to tube light, light rig, lights display off there we go so now we only see the cylinder the lights are still active they're still doing their job we're just not seeing them in the viewer which makes our life easier let's go back to our axis make our light bigger let's look at the whole scene and now i can move my light using the axis and rotate it like so for example give it a little bit of an angle and move it around here. So if I look at my scanline render, I can see my scene is being lit by my tube light. Everything's pretty bright. Let's go back to the tube light under color. We are gonna lower the intensity, let's say 40 or even lower, let's say 30. My whole scene is being lit by my tube light, but I cannot see uh, the shadows are the reflections. This is meant to be a chrome ball here. So these are limitations of the scanline render. So instead of rendering with a scanline render node, I'm going to render with a ray render node. The ray render node is included in Nuke and it's uh, the built-in ray tracing node for uh, Nuke and it enables to see reflections and shadows. Here we go. Uh, let's put a little soft clip at the end to make our highlights nicer to look at. And there you go. So that's our scene that's being lit by our tube light. Now it looks more realistic. We have reflections on our chrome ball and we've got shadows on the ground and everywhere else. Speaking of shadows, you can see that the shadows are pretty nasty here. You can see the actual repeated shadows uh, overlapping. This is because we don't have enough lights on our rig. So if we look at the tube light and let's turn the icons back on, really what we have here is 10 lights in a row. So when we look at the result of the ray render, we literally have 10 shadows overlapping on top of each other. If you want the illusion of a nice continuous shadow, you can increase the amount of lights. So let's say 60 lights. And now you can see that our shadows look much nicer, but our render times are slower, of course. So it's a trade-off. You can choose uh, how many lights you need depending on how fast you want to render and how much you care about shadow quality. Here we go. So now we can adjust the quality of our shadows with the amount of lights, but of course this affects render time. Uh, speaking of shadows, let's move our light a little bit on the right. so so when you have a light source that's blocked by geometry you can choose to block the light with the full geometry or the texture so if we have a card with the texture on it you can see that the shadow is 
not obeying the texture. So right now the entire geometry is blocking the light rays and casting a shadow. To adjust that, we can go in our tube light and change the shadow mode from solid to full alpha. And now the alpha channel will uh, drive the shadow. So you can see the letters alpha are casting a shadow on the statue and the transparent bits are not blocking the light anymore. So that's good. Uh, for legacy purposes, we ha also have clipped alpha. This is for um, some lights are supported in uh, scanline render. Honestly, if you need uh, full shadows, use ray render with full alpha. If you want to render a bit faster, you can use solid mode if you don't have transparency on your textures. Let's turn that card off. Okay, now our scene is a little bit uh, simpler. Let's uh, have a look at the directional uh, options. So by default, the light is directional off, meaning omnidirectional. It's going to shine all around every uh, light source. If you turn on directional, then you're going to shine light only in one direction. You can see it in the 3D viewer. If you enable the display of the light uh, icons, you can see the little cone. That's the direction your light will be uh, shining towards. If we go back to our ray render. You can see that the light is shining only towards the left. If you need to adjust the uh, feathering of the barn door, if you will, then you can use the scale control. So by a weird quirk, the scale of the lights in Nuke affect how the feathering is rendered for directional lights. This is very strange, but it's, uh, it's a fact. We have to deal with it. So now we can scale the lights. So if I make the lights smaller, let's say 0.2, then we have more feathering on the barn door. If we make the lights bigger, then we have uh, virtually a hard cutout. So to make it real soft, we can set it to, let's say, 0.1. Now our barn doors or our virtual barn doors are really feathered. If you need to close the barn doors, you can adjust the penumbra angle. So if I set that to, let's say, 90 degrees, then the doors are closing, 45 degrees, 15 degrees and so on here we go so now we can create like a little sliver of light by scaling down our lights quite a bit and closing our barn doors so this is like lights shining through a crack and in an open door or something like that so you can adjust the barn doors or virtual barn doors with the scale control and the penumbra control so if you scale up then the penumbra is going to be really sharp and if you make this wide open, then the barn doors are open. Here we go. So that's our directional controls. If you go to the color tab, you can adjust the color of the light, of course. So you can make the light any color you want. And if you want, you can change the intensity, of course. So if you make the light brighter and it's going to be brighter obviously uh, you can adjust the fall off so no fall off means distance has no effect so we need to bring our intensity down quite a bit so now the distance to the light source has zero effect so linear is a linear fall off if you are twice the distance then it's going to be half the intensity and so on I'm not sure what the formula is for quadratic, but it's more intense. So now it's falling off faster. So we need more intensity to compensate. And finally, we have cubic, which is the most uh, realistic. So, so we need a lot of intensity to compensate for the fall off. That's very aggressive. So if your objects are really far from your light source, you will need uh, really high intensity numbers, perhaps in the thousands or the tens of thousands if the scene is really big. The emissive object is the actual white cylinder that you see here. So you can enable or disable it with the enable switch here. By default, it is transparent because if it's not transparent and you enable full shadows, you will block your light source with the uh, cylinder. So the lights are inside the cylinder and they will be blocked by the cylinder. So transparent is on by default. You can turn that off. If you want, you can adjust the color of the cylinder independently from the color of the light. So you can tweak that. Uh, you can uh, change the intensity of the cylinder also independently from the light. You can adjust the radius to make it bigger or smaller. So if you want a thicker uh, fluorescent light, you can make it thicker or smaller. 
and you can adjust the rows and columns so that's uh literally the settings of the cylinder the new cylinder so if we look at it in 3d you can adjust let's turn off the icons you can adjust the rows and columns so you can adjust make it a little prism if you want so this is the same settings you would find in a typical nuke cylinder so there you go this was an overview of pxf tube light i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video goodbye